Hello everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm going to do an art journal page in my jelly print journal. This one is almost full and there's just only a few pages left so I'm going to do an autumn art page but it doesn't look like it when you look at the page that I picked but there's only three to pick from and they were all pink so <clears throat> I picked the one with the leaves. Um, this project is for the hashtag love autumn art event from the Creative Arts Collaboration. The Creative Arts Collaboration is a YouTube group that has formed to help each other and support other people who make creative content, like, you know, art content crafts. So um, if you want to join, there's a link below in the description where it says see more down there, that little box, that will take you to their YouTube channel and you can look there for the directions on how to apply to join the group if you are a YouTube creator. Also if you put the hashtag love autumn art in the search bar above you can find all kinds of, of different crafts and arts and painting and whatever little books and all kinds of things that are people are making on their channel to go with the hashtag. So that's how it works. It's kind of like a little art hop. Um, only videos. So to begin with I told you this page is pretty darn pink and purple and so I decided to both even out the sides to make a double page spread and also to make to keep the pattern the visual pattern in the background that I had but to make it more fall colors autumn colors. So, <clears throat> so I'm using my fingers and some different um, more autumn -y colors like orange and brown and rust colors and copper and red and a, a little bit of green because there was a lot quite a bit of green on the right side so I needed to integrate the left side with some green because there really wasn't any in it. So once I'm done adding bits and bobs of paint and these are all just um, student grade acrylic heavy body paints um, once I'm done with that, then the page looks more cohesive on both sides <clears throat> and also has more of a fall toned look to it. So I guess all I ha really have to say about that is that no matter what you start with, even if it's, a, if it's a beautiful jelly print that you love, it's still just a layer. When you're doing mixed media, it's all just a layer. And all I wanted to remain from those jelly prints was the patterning see how you can still see the leaves and things through the through the background that's what I wanted to remain so once I was done with the color change and adding a layer of color then now I'm adding some more visual texture by stamping and this is a French script stamp some kind of love poem in French I don't read French but it's from Stampin' Up from a long long time ago and I'm stamping on my page with archival ink which is permanent it is a ranger product and once I put wet stuff over it it's not gonna to go anywhere it's gonna be there forever then I'm adding some stenciling as well using the Pebio Studio acrylics in Titan Buff this is kind of an, an um, un, uh, unwhite white <laughs> I know that makes no sense but it's a neutral color as in white, only it's just not quite as bright. It's um, it's buff, it's tan, it's whatever you want to call it. So I'm just adding a little bit more visual texture with a stencil in that color and br kind of bringing back in some of the lighter tones. And then to clean it up, I'm just um, I've got some uh, pretty background papers in the works here. <laughs> so I was just getting the excess onto that real quick. So like I said, this is my jelly print journal. This entire journal was handmade and there is um, a video, not about it specifically, but about how you make one. I'll try to remember to put the iCard um, up above so that you can go and visit that video if you would like to make one of these. And it's some um, cardstock weight paper that has been jelly printed on both sides and sewn into a cover that I made using a um, cereal box. I've loved it. I used it all through Nano Jamo, which is the November um, art journaling every single day 
which is coming up soon. We'll be doing that again. Um, it's, it's really nice to start out with a jelly print because you're not starting out with a blank page. So for art journaling, it's really great. So what I'm doing now is I'm drawing some leaves and this is a Stabilo All pencil. It's a highly water reactive black pencil, but the reason they call it All is because it writes on everything. So this is really great for writing over the top of acrylic paint. You know I've got a ton of acrylic paint on this page. Not only was it already jelly printed with acrylic paint, then I put more acrylic paint on the top. So this writes really well over the top of it. So if you're ever painting over something else, this is a great tool to, to draw in your drawing so that you can see it. However, keep in mind that the black is water reactive and when you put paint over the top of it, it's going to move a little bit. So as I'm painting around all my leaves, um, this is a technique that I call exclusion. I'm excluding the background to, cr to make the foreground stand out more. As I'm doing that, I'm careful not to really smear the black with my um, Titan Buff paint. If I, if, like, if I went right over the lines, it would smear black. And you might see it a me doing it a little bit, but it's not too bad. I am going to end up putting shadows back on there, so I'm not super, super concerned. But I am being slightly careful. So I'm just going around, and um, this, this paint is more of a professional grade paint. It's very pigmented, so it's having no problem painting over the background at all. It's opaque. It leaves a little bit of patterning, which I'm fine with. I actually wanted it to do that. I didn't want it. If I wanted it to be completely everything blocked out, I mean, this is mixed media. I like layers. I want to see patterns and and colors between in you know coming up through layers. Um, if I wanted it to completely be gone, I would have to do a second coat, but I'm not going to because I like it the way it is. So I started out with a, a brush that's designed for acrylic. It's got very stiff bristles, but then I sw had to switch to a smaller one, and I don't have a smaller brush in that stiff bristle format, so I ended up having to switch to a softer brush, but that's fine. It was no big deal. And this took a little bit. This whole page from start to finish took me one hour, ten minutes, and it is... Um, sped up to four times fast so that you can um, still have time in your day <laughs> to watch my video other videos if you want to or someone else's <laughs> I'd prefer it was mine but you know if you're gonna watch someone else's I have a lot of recommendations of great people who are making great stuff on YouTube including all the people in the creative arts collaboration I guess while I'm talking about videos, I will remind myself to say, <clears throat> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and um, subscribe if you haven't already. You can just click that little button down in the lower corner and it'll take you right to the subscribe um, thingy. <laughs> and uh, comment so that I know that you were here and even share if you want to. If you think this is really great, you can post it on your Facebook or pin it to Pinterest, something like that. Those things help me by telling YouTube that I'm making something valuable and then I become one of those people that they recommend. Like once you finish this, you'll see some more videos down there that they're recommending and I want to be one of those people that they recommend. So when you do those things, it helps me out a lot. So thank you, thank you very much. <clears throat> so that's pretty much done. And now I'm going to add shadows. And what I'm doing is taking that same water reactive pencil, the Stabilo All pencil, and I'm writing around my drawings heavy, you know, putting a lot of pressure onto it. <clears throat> then I'm going to take water, and this one in a different water barrel brush. I used a couple different ones. This one's the flat bristle one. And activate that black, and then paint it around, paint it around to make shadow. <clears throat> this helps the, the leaves even come even more forward, makes them stand out even more than they already do from just painting out the background. 
and it's fun I like it I like this pencil a lot you can see that because it's like only about half or less left because I've sharpened it so many times I need to order another one <coughs> and you can order them from Amazon I pretty much order everything from Amazon because I don't have uh, stores close by that carry the things that I want so um, if I have time I'll put the links down below to the Amazon to the Stabila pencil and all that like I've been doing lately I am going out of town however so I don't know if I'll have time to do it gonna go visit my kid so be gone for a few days Going up to the cooler country, away from the 100 degree weather. <laughs> so this is pretty self-explanatory, you know, just write hard and then activate. I'm also using the pencil to draw in a couple little lines on the inside of the leaves and then blending that to make it look like they have veins, you know, leaf veins. What I wish you guys could see is the shimmery copper paint that I put on there. <laughs> it's so pretty. I, I, of all the metallic colors, copper is my favorite. Love it. So all those shadows are done. I think that took the most time of everything that I did on this page. <laughs> it was a long one. So to finish up, I'm adding some splatters. And this is that uh, dark red color. And I'm just using um, a little paintbrush to do it instead of a fan brush because I wanted larger splatters. 
if you use the fan brush like you normally see me do, it makes really tiny splatters. So that was good. Then I did some of more of that copper. I'm making splatters with that as well because I just love that copper. So pretty. Copper number one, silver number two, gold number three. <laughs> That's my opinion on metallic colors. So once that is dry, I add a little um, quote that I saw on Pinterest. It says, autumn paints and colors that summer has never seen. I thought that was kind of cool when I saw it. So I decided to add that to my page and I'm using a food ball pin, which you don't see me use very often because they don't dry very quickly, which bothers me. But my Posca pin was in the other room. <laughs> So that's why I didn't use it. And I was going to put my date stamp on, but I couldn't remember what the date was. <laughs> so I decided to just finish up with my white Posca pen and call it good. Put the date on later. And I used it to make some a few little white splatters over the top of the leaves. And then just some really quick, sketchy um, white lines over the veins. And that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.